Alright guys, what's up? In this video I'm going to be showing you how to record your set if you have the SL3. Now as you know, the SL3 can record your set via the auxiliary input on the SL3 box. Now in order to record your set, what you're going to need to do is run a cable from one of your mixer's main outputs into the auxiliary input on the SL3. Now depending on what type of mixer you have, uh, you're either going to need to use the master output, the booth output, or if your mixer has it, the recording output. And if your mixer has the recording output, I would recommend using that. And that's what I'm going to be using since my mixer has recording output. So what I'm going to do is run the RCA cable from the recording output on the mixer into the auxiliary input on the SL3. Uh, the auxiliary input is on the side with the big ground post. Do not plug it into the auxiliary output. I want to go into the auxiliary input. So uh, connect the recording output on the mixer to the auxiliary input on the SL3. Now you also need to set the dip switch for the auxiliary input to line level. You don't want to keep it on phono level because your mixer outputs line level, not phono. And if you have the dip switch set to phono for the auxiliary input, then your mix is going to sound very loud and distorted and it's going to sound like shit basically, so you don't want that. So make sure the auxiliary input's dip switch is set to line level on the SL3. Obviously if you're using turntables, uh, and the control vinyl, you want your left deck and your right deck input set to phono level on the dip switches, but the auxiliary input needs to be set to line level. Now, uh, in Scratch Live, you have two options for recording. If you go into the setup menu on the hardware tab page, you have the option for 16-bit or 24-bit recording. I just leave it as 16-bit because I play mostly MP3s, which are 16-bit anyway, so there's not really much point of setting it to 24-bit. Um, you might get some marginal increase in sound quality, but not much. You just have a bigger file, basically. So I leave it set at 16-bit. Now, the recording area itself is under the left deck in Scratch Live over here. This is the recording area down here. Um, first thing I want to do is make sure Auxiliary is selected first in this little drop-down menu right here, this little triangle. Make sure Aux is selected, not left in or right in. If you want to record your normal vinyl records or CDs, you would use the left in or right in. But for recording your set, you're going to want to use the auxiliary input. So make sure auxiliary is selected from the drop-down menu. Now we need to test our levels first before we begin recording. You do not want your recording too loud and distorted, and you'll have clip peaks, and then your mixer will sound like crap again. So uh, we need to test the levels first of all. So let's just load up a, a track to the deck. And what I like to do is go to what I like to call the meat of the track, which is usually somewhere in the middle where most of the, uh, you know, most of the track's elements are, and those will probably be the typically the loud loudest part of the track. So go to the middle of the track and uh, just play it. You're going to want to set all your levels on your mixer, you know, and whatnot. And you'll notice down here the LED lights start flashing up. And this knob right here is how you control the recording uh, input level. I recommend you keep it somewhere probably between the fourth and fifth green after that it starts getting really distorted um, in scratch life so I err on the side of caution and keep it a little bit lower than a little bit higher so I usually like to keep it around two-thirds um, turned up on the knob and that is basically it so now we have our level set correctly we can go back and begin recording uh, also, one thing to keep in mind is when you're actually mixing two tracks, uh, obviously sound waveforms uh, add constructive, uh, constructively constructive interference. So, uh, also keep in mind when you're actually mixing two tracks together and you have both channels open, uh, the sound will get even a little bit louder. So, uh, you might just want to turn that dial just a tad bit lower. And as I mentioned, it's always better to err on the side of caution and record a little bit lower than a little bit higher because you can always go back in a, you know, a separate wave editing program or DAW program and increase the levels and normalize it, which most people do anyways after they record a mix. Um, so, yes, better to err on the side of caution, record a little bit lower than a little bit higher. Right, anyway, so now that we have our level set, we can go back and begin recording. So let's just go back and start the track over. Now, to begin recording, you need to click this little red dot button right here, and that will start flashing, signifying it's recording. You'll also see the timer starts counting up, like so. So now it's just a matter of going through and playing your set like normal. And when you're done, I'm actually not going to record an entire set for obvious time reasons, but when you're done, 
play in your set, you need to click the red button again to stop the recording. Then you're going to need to click over here in this little box area and type in a name for your mix. Uh, I'm just going to name it whatever. Mix. Oh, what's today's date? The 5th, 2010. Or 2010 for if you prefer. Uh, okay, so after you type in the name, now you need to click this little save disk icon right here. When you do that, Scratch Live will create a new crate called Recorded, and your file will be in here, and also any future files uh, that you record will be in this crate, this recorded crate also. So now you may be wondering, all right, I got the mix recorded. Where is the actual file stored? Uh, your recordings are saved in your Scratch Live folder in on your internal drive, and that will be in your music folder on a Mac or your My Music folder on a PC. Uh, a little shortcut though is to just highlight the file and press Control plus R, and that will open the file in Finder or Explorer. And so here is your file right here. Now, if you, for now, you can go ahead and you know import this to your burning program and burn it to CD. Uh, note though, it's just going to be one huge long file, and most people are going to want to separate it into separate tracks and uh, do some type of post editing on it. You know, normalize the levels. Uh, fix any mess ups that you possibly did. Um, all that is uh, topics for another discussion, but here's the file. So if you need to open it in another program like uh, you know Wave Editor, I'm just going to be using Audacity. <clears throat> Excuse me. So here's the file right here. Uh, so again, uh, you can go back, uh, edit the mix if you need to, fix the levels, split the mix up into separate tracks. I'm actually going to uh, do all that. I'll leave that on for you to research and figure out on your own. Uh, but anyways, that's pretty much it. That is how you record your set with the SL3. Now, if you have the SL1, unfortunately, you cannot record your set in Scratch Live. You have to use another program like Audacity or SoundForge or uh, Adobe Audition, Ableton Live, whatever, any of the several DAW programs out there. Because uh, the SL1 doesn't have the extra input to allow recording of your set. So you're going to need to use a separate program and sound card to record if you have the SL1. But if you have the SL3, this is what you can use to uh, do, actually, to record your set in Scratch Live. If and only if you have the SL3 or the TTM57, though. If you have a 57, the process is uh, pretty much the same thing. Uh, but anyway, so hope you enjoyed. This is how to record your set with the SL3.